Imagine you are on your phone and you receive a text or a WhatsApp call which you don't even pick. This simple text or call can open the gates for arguably the world's most advanced spyware. It bypasses your phone's security walls and gets installed in this device. The spyware is Pegasus. Pegasus can access literally everything on your phone. It has access to your messages, your phone calls, your camera, your location, your social media accounts, even your microphone speaker, which enables the software to listen to the surroundings even when the phone is not in use. And the dangerous part? You will never know that you are being watched and that anybody you are with, family, friends, contacts, are being watched too. Pegasus can attack both iOS and Android phones. The spyware can deflect all the security parameters thanks to something called zero-day vulnerability. A zero-day vulnerability is a software vulnerability discovered by attackers before the owner or developer has become aware of it. This allows the spyware to access and steal data from the affected device. An investigation by The Wire in collaboration with 16 other media organizations around the world identified the names of 1,500 individuals from 10 different countries who were the target of this software deployed by the authorities in India, Mexico, Hungary, Morocco and other countries. Out of these, The Wire identified over 150 Indians whose phone were probably affected by Pegasus based on the presence of their numbers in a leaked database of numbers selected by government clients of NSA Group, the Israeli company that sells the spyware. We were also able to forensically examine the phones of over 20 of these individuals and found traces of an actual attempted Pegasus infection in 10 of them. The list of targets include 40 journalists, 14 politicians, a former election commissioner, 41 activists and lawyers, three CBI officials, and also the woman who had accused the former Chief Justice of India, Ranjan Gogoi, of sexual harassment. Some striking names in the list were Rahul Gandhi, Prashant Kishore, Ashok Lavasa, former CBI Chief Alok Verma, all of whom had crosswords with the government, but also Anil Ambani and Rakesh Asthana, currently Delhi Police Commissioner, both of whom are considered close to the Modi dispensation. The names of the founding editors of The Wire also featured in the list along with leading journalists like Sushant Singh and Paranjoy Guha Thakurta. Other people whose phones were snooped on were the accused from Bhima Koregao case, Umar Khalid and other civil rights activists. Forensic tests by Amnesty International Security Lab and the University of Toronto Citizen Lab have confirmed the presence of Pegasus on the phones of at least a dozen individuals in India. The NSO Group says it sells Pegasus only to vetted governments and that each sale must be approved by the Israeli Ministry of Defense. So, was it the Indian government which bought and used Pegasus against these targets? And if so, under which law and on whose authority? The infections all go back to 2017, so only the Narendra Modi government has the answer to these questions. Yet. In Parliament and then again before the Supreme Court, the government refused to confirm or deny its acquisition and use. In October 2021, Chief Justice of India N. V. Ramana rejected the government's plea that revealing any information would affect national security and decided to set up an independent expert committee to probe the matter. This probe was ordered after petitions highlighted a breach of the right to privacy. Former Supreme Court Judge R. V. Ravindran heads the committee. The panel also includes Naveen Kumar Chaudhary, a professor at Gandhinagar's National Forensic Sciences University, Prabharan P., who teaches engineering at Kerala's Amrita Vishwa, and Ashwin Anil Gumaste of IIT Bombay. The committee is expected to submit its report soon. So what do we know so far about the panel's findings? The committee was essentially given three tasks. Number one, to find out if Pegasus was used on Indian citizens. Number two, whether Pegasus was acquired by any central or state agency. And number three, was it legal to use Pegasus? What has the committee done so far? Number one, it has collected 29 smartphones and conducted a digital forensic analysis. Number two, 
It collected statements from 13 individuals, including technical experts. And number three, it reached out to various state players. For example, the committee reached out to all state director generals of police, that is the DGPs, to ask them whether they had procured the spyware from the NSO group. But what is still unclear in the case is the interaction of Modi government with the Pegasus software. We don't know if Home Ministry, intelligence agencies and the National Security Advisor's Office have been called to depose or asked to provide statements. These questions will only be answered when the report of the independent committee is submitted in the Supreme Court and the CGI makes its contents public. If it turns out that the government stonewalled the Justice Ravindran Committee, then the Supreme Court would have no option but to insist that the 10th serving and former officials most likely to know about Pegasus and its use in India come and testify on oath. They are Union Home Minister Amit Shah and National Security Advisor Ajit Kumar Doval, the current and former heads of the Intelligence Bureau, Rajiv Jain and Arvind Kumar, the current and former heads of Research and Analysis Wing, Anil Dhasmana and Samant Goel, the current and former Cabinet Secretaries, P.K. Sinha and Rajiv Gauba, and current and former Union Home Secretaries, Rajiv Maharshi and Ajay Bhalla. These men can no longer use national security as a shield. Remember, the court itself said National security claims cannot justify violating our fundamental rights. So this is what the famous whistleblower Edward Snowden told The Guardian, one of the Pegasus project partners of The Wire, when asked about the use of Pegasus by governments. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what you do. Your position isn't going to protect you. If you're a minister, a prime minister, guess what? You are on the list. You're a Supreme Court justice, you are on the list. If you're an ordinary person, guess what? You are on the list too. All you have to do is come to the attention of somebody with the money to pay any one of these companies for the tools to break into your phone. What Snowden is saying is that at stake are not just the rights of a few individuals. If left unchecked, Pegasus will affect us all. The government does not want the truth to come out because the truth is politically explosive. If the Supreme Court is able to establish that it was the Modi government which used Pegasus against political opponents, journalists and others, this would raise serious doubts about the subversion of not just individual privacy, but of elections and democracy itself. The government cannot afford to tell the truth. Ordinary Indian citizens cannot afford to ignore the truth.